This video is brought to you by VolunteerAudio.com, your number one source for all things Harley-Davidson audio, from individual radios, speakers, and amps, to complete plug-and-play amp and speaker systems, we've got you covered. And once you've ordered your package from Volunteer Audio, it includes lifetime tech support, and we have the very best step-by-step -step installation video so you can install it yourself and save money. Hello, I'm Jay, owner of Volunteer Audio in Oliver Springs, Tennessee. And I'm going to show you how to install the new Soundstream Reserve HDHU 9813SG radio in your 98 to 13 Harley Davidson Ultra, Electro Glide, or Street Glide. Step by step, everything you need to know how to get this installed to give you the least amount of trouble putting it in and allow you to have this amazing radio when you're done. So follow along. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how we got here installing a Soundstream radio on a Harley to begin with. So a short year and a half ago, Soundstream Reserve introduced this HDHU 14 Plus. It was the first directly bolt-in plug-and-play radio for the 14 and newer Harley Davidsons. IPX rated, better display, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all the things we needed on one of those bikes, they were the first to do it. Now then there were a lot of naysayers. People were like, will it hold up? How well will it last? I, you know, it's a lot of money to put this radio in and we don't know about it. A year, and a, half a year and a half later, I'll tell you, they have been awesome. The defect rate has been extremely low. The warranties on the few that have had problems have been super easy and processed. Soundstream has done many, many updates already to make these radios even better. And since then they've released more models. So they listened to us and the additional parts and the things we wanted in the radio, and then they released, released this new model, the HDHU 14SI. It added a few awesome things, like it retained factory boom amplifiers and CVOs. It added the ability to display all the vehicle information, such as gauge information, in those 14 and newer bikes. It's been a huge success, and it's been phenomenal. I'm telling you all this to kind of ease your mind on this product. It's not new. It is a rendition of those two radios, but made for the 98 to 13 Street Glide. With that being said, we've already got this model for the Road Glide, the HDHU 9813RG. It's went in, it's been phenomenal. The owners that I've spoke to that have bought this and put in their bike are so happy. You've got a beautiful bike. It may be a few years old and you want that new tech, but you don't want to spend 30 or 40,000 on another new bike. So by buying this radio and putting it in, many, many people have told me, you saved me a boatload of money buying a new Harley and I am back in love with my existing bike. So that brings us to today. We've been waiting a few months, two months ago, almost three, we introduced a video about this radio and started pre-orders for it. There's been a few setbacks, but I can tell you right now, at the time of this video, this is the first one we've received. It was overnighted for the video, but we're just a few days from now, we'll be shipping these to everybody that pre-ordered and we'll have them available on our site for you to buy and put in your bike. So the time is now to give you a video going over it in, in person as well as we're launching a step-by-step -step video that'll launch later. Uh, so watch our next video as well to see exactly how to install every bit of what it takes to put it in your bike. So this radio, let's talk about features. It's the same features as the HDHU 14 Plus and the HDHU 9813RG. 13 band equalizer, high pass and low pass filters, sub control, but the things I really like, the display is optically bonded. So it's easy to see even with the sunlight on it compared to any other radio you would have in your bike. It has an awesome clean output to feed amplifiers. So even though it has a 50 watt by four amp inside the radio, which is a lot stronger than factory, we know you're gonna wanna put an amplifier on to get that volume louder than the wind in the engine. And they give us a great signal to feed into that amplifier. We've also added something you've never had before, the ability to have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto on that older bike. So now you have always up-to-date navigation, access to your music apps, everything you wanted, that new tech is now in this radio. So on top of that, we have a backup camera input. Uh, we have Sirius XM inputs. 
we have so many other features and some things that are very, very different about this radio uh, that we'll go over now. So on your stock radio or your stock fairing for that matter, you actually have a turn signal neutral indicator up on the middle of your fairing. This radio to be big enough to meet Apple CarPlay and Android Auto certification, you have to have a certain size screen. It's gotta be 6.8 inches or bigger. This is right at seven inches. To do that, they had to cover that bar on your fairing. So Soundstream did this awesome job of integrating in the top of the radio. It's actually a much better looking display than what was originally in your fairing. And it's super simple because they put the factory plug. You simply unplug the factory display that had that little turn signal indicator, you plug into the radio, and that is a standalone part in the radio. So even if the radio were to fail, which we don't believe is gonna happen, but if it did, that turn signal bar and all of that continues to work with or without radio function. You don't even have to plug the radio in for that to work, only that bar. I think they did a great job on that design. Uh, also, we're, you just don't have much room between the, the ignition switch and the fairing. Previously, the only option we had was to replace the entire inner fairing with a doubled-in fairing. If you've ever installed one of those, it can be a bear. It's many, many hours of labor. Fitment on it's not always great, and you've got to run everything exactly like it should to possibly get it to bolt back together. It can be a nightmare for some people that have attempted to put that doubled-in fairing in. We've done plenty of them, uh, and we've even done videos showing you how to do it, but I will not do it any longer because I believe this is a much, much better solution easier to install, and the end result, I think, looks as good or better. These guys have done an awesome job. I'll show you in just in a minute on the bike what it looks like. But again, just a quick recap. If you want new technology, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, a 13-band EQ, you probably didn't even have bass and treble adjustment on that factory radio, while remaining IPX marine rated. We don't have to worry about rain. We don't have to worry about washing the bike. This radio is going to continue to last for years and years. And on top of that, it does have a full two-year warranty from Soundstream if something were to happen. So we've, this is our fourth model. We've been selling them for a year and a half. So far, they have been awesome, and I expect no difference out of this radio because it is these same radios in a different shape and size. It took a while, but I think they did an excellent job of building a radio to fit your bike perfectly. All right, so let's move to the bike. We'll get it tore apart. I'll show you the radio installed, and we'll let you see it in action. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to remove your fairing in preparation to install your new radio. All you're gonna need is a T27 screwdriver, Torx driver, and we're gonna remove the inner fairing bolts first. So let's start with some of the kind of hidden ones, the lower ones. We're gonna look all the way up in here, kind of turn your wheel where you can get to it, and you're gonna see that there is a Torx bit on each side in here in the bottom. We're gonna loosen those first and remove those all the way out. We're also gonna remove a Torx bolt up here next to the speaker. Just two on each side. I'll move over and do the same thing on the other side. All right, so now that we have those interfering bolts undone, normally I'll take these little side marker lights and I'm gonna twist them out. So it's gonna give us a little bit more room to remove our fairing. And we're gonna remove the three at the top of the windshield. Normally I fully remove the two outside ones. And then I move to the middle one because I keep a little pressure on the fairing so it doesn't try to fall off. I'm gonna remove our windshield and this little storage bag. Once you have these bolts out now, you should be able to lift your fairing up. Just kind of wiggle it out between these lights. Once you have it out, you can unplug your headlight. And set your fairing aside. All right, now on this particular bike, it has a factory CB. That's the module here on top of the radio. We're simply gonna unplug the connectors from that, as well as the two main radio connectors on the back of the radio and the antenna. So we're gonna unscrew our CB antenna. Simply unscrew it and unplug it. I'm just gonna unplug the secondary connector that plugs into it. Now we're gonna have our main radio harness as well as our rear speaker harness. This is what powers up those rear speakers factory is the second plug, that's all it does. Now each one of these has a little tab at the top you just lift up to be able to unplug it. And then we're gonna take our antenna 
to unplug it from the back of the radio as well. So now our radio is unplugged. Now we just have two bolts on each side of the radio that we're going to remove so we can slide the radio chassis out. Now we're going to take a 3 16 Allen head tool and we're just going to come into both sides of the radio. We're going to remove the two Allens that are holding the radio in. Now you'll see there's a hole actually in the side of this bracket that gives you access to get your tool into that other bolt. Now your new radio is going to come with these bolts new as well. So hold on to them just in case, but the radio is going to come with them also. All right, same thing on the other side. So now after you have those four bolts out, you're simply going to grab that radio chassis. Uh, actually, we have a wire clipped to the bottom and clip it. We're going to grab that. We're just going to wiggle and pull it backwards and remove it from the bike. Next, we're going to be removing the ignition switch. We have to pull it out because our new radio is actually going to feed in from the fairing the other direction. That way that screen can stay stationary. It's not motorized, it's not adjustable, it's not folding, and it can't be because it's got to go in one specific place and we need it completely sealed from any type of water. To do that, they did a fixed screen, so we're going to slide it in from the other direction. Let's go around and remove that ignition switch. All right, so I'm going to show you how simple it is to remove the ignition switch. Now they do sell an alignment tool if you were to get this out of alignment, but in the many, many years that I've been doing these radios, I've never gotten one out of alignment doing it in this same process. So on the bottom side of the switch, if you'll reach your finger under it, you will feel a button. You can push up on that button and rotate the switch over to accessory. As you get to accessory, you're going to see it release like you just saw, and you're going to lift it straight out. Now here's a good visual of that button that I'm pushing with my finger. You could also take a screwdriver and push up on it as well. I've never needed that. Now at this point, we've got our switch out and we just took it out with it pointed in the accessory position. So when we go to put it back in, we'll put it back in in the same place, push down, rotate, it'll lock right back in. I find this to be very easy. I know they do sell a tool if you get it out of alignment, but no more than what we're doing, I don't think it's gonna be an issue for you as long as you do it like you've seen, I just did it. All right, so let's get a radio and slide it in the hole. All right, so when Soundstream built this radio, they have a street glide motorcycle that they take the events, that they build their systems around, that they designed this radio around. Something we found out later, after the radios got here and they've already been produced, Harley actually has two different fairings on these 98 to 13 bikes. Believe it or not, they actually changed the depth of this plastic slightly between a factory tour pack bike, something that had rear speakers or a CVO, and a base model bike. Now the difference is about two millimeters. Now we've got this awesome rubber gasket to seal water out and make sure that none of the water that ends up on the radio ends up in the fairing. So they built us this heavy duty gasket and on a street glide or a base model bike with no rear speakers, this is gonna be an extremely easy slide it in, put the bolts in, install. This particular bike having a factory tour pack, I wanted to show this to you on the harder, harder bike because it's still not gonna be that hard to install. This fairing's a little thicker and you're gonna have to push harder as you line up these bolts on the side of the radio. So we're just gonna take our radio and we're gonna slide it in from the front. It just goes back through this factory hole. We're gonna get it in so far. I'm gonna check and make sure that none of my wiring is in a position to get pinched or damaged, that it's all pulled out here. Just making sure that there's nothing in the way. I'm then gonna take the radio and while pulling on the back of the chassis and pushing on the front, I'm gonna get my bolts between those factory brackets. I've got my radio pushed in, now we have our gasket. We're gonna to wanna to push this so that the radio is all the way against the fairing to give us enough room for this switch to turn. It went in pretty easy. This is the first time this radio has went in this bike. You saw me wiggle it and put it in. I'll have our photographer come around to the other side and I'll do this again so you can see it from the other angle. So I'm gonna push the radio back out and just show you what I did from this side. So with my hand on the front, hand on the back, this is one person. We're not having to use two or three people to put this in. I'm gonna take my finger, I'm gonna get one of my bolts slightly past this bracket. I'm gonna push out on this bracket so I get a little bit of clearance. They've made this the exact width. Now just wiggling this and pulling backwards, both of my bolts have lined up with these holes. Now I'm gonna start all four bolts and then while pushing forward, I'm gonna tighten them to get as much room 
to compress that gasket as much as possible to make room for that ignition switch. All right, so in the box with the radio from Soundstream, you're gonna get new hardware. It's all stainless bolts. They send you four screws just like this to go on the side of the radio. Now you're gonna get four extra screws. I'm sure you're gonna go, what are these for? They've got this little beveled Allen head. It's gonna recess down in an amp plate. So one thing they did here that I find really cool is they added four holes that are pre-threaded to the top of the radio. This is the same pattern that's on the 14 and newer Harley radios in those street glides. So what this means is we can take the amp mount for the, 90, uh, for the 14 to 23 street glide and it's gonna bolt right to the same pattern on top of this radio. So if you get the plug and play uh, precision power amp set up, uh, it's gonna bolt that amp right to the top. Now there's still plenty of room and this is a big aluminum chassis, so some other amplifiers that may not use that mount could still be Velcroed or secured right to the top of this radio as well. But I thought it was awesome that they pre-thought about adding a provision in for us to use those existing amp plates for that newer bike. All right, so again, you got four of these. Let's get them put in each side. We're not gonna tighten them all the way up till we push the radio in a little further. All right, you're gonna see in here, you'll see the factory holes are slotted. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hand start each one of these bolts in, and then we're gonna pull back on the radio as much as we can while we tighten them up to give as much room as possible and compress that gasket as much as possible. So you can see what I'm doing. All I did is I've grabbed the chassis with my hand. I'm wiggling and pulling it backwards as I hand start this bolt in. And I was just able to get the rear one over here started. I'm gonna go ahead and start the rear one on the other side. Now I have a tendency to make things look a little easier than they are just because I've been a mechanic and done this kind of audio for 20 plus years. So I can basically see with the tips of my fingers. Not everybody has that ability, but this isn't really hard either. So both of the back bolts are started. I'm gonna run them in a little bit more. I'm not gonna tighten them up, but I'm gonna get them in so I've got a little bit more room to get my fingers by them as I start the other ones. So quarter 20 threaded bolt. It is included, it is stainless, and it uses the same Allen head tool you just used to remove the factory bolts. Well thought out, they do everything they can to make this a very simple installation. All right, so I wanna show you a little tip, something that we've done for years with any of these radios we put in. I've got both of my back bolts started, but my front bolt really didn't wanna line up just right. If you'll take a pair of pliers and grab this little metal bracket, you can bend it up or down a little bit and actually just flex it enough to line up perfect with that front hole. You're gonna need it lined up perfectly because once you get your fingers in here, it's gotta line up perfectly straight. There's just no room there to apply much pressure as you try to start the bolt. But so I've bent it around, I've got it where it's pretty well lined up perfectly. I can look through that hole. Now I'm gonna take and try to start the bolt by hand. All right, so once I've got it just kind of started there, I'm gonna take my tool and run it in further. We'll move on to the other side and do the same thing. So again, just look up through this hole before you start. Look through here, make sure you're lined up perfectly. If not, just kind of tweak this bracket slightly with a pair of pliers till you are. All right, so again on this side, I've kind of just pulled this wiring over where my hand will fit in. I've looked through the hole, I've kind of tweaked this bracket a little bit already to make sure that I've got you know, somewhat lined up to start this bolt. Um, normally every time I do this, I drop the bolt a couple times, and every time I drop the bolt, it goes in a place it's hard to find. So um, try to do a little bit of that work ahead of time so you're not watching me drop it over and over, trying to figure out what's going on. All right, you'll see my hands are a little dirty in there where I dropped the bolt a few times down in different areas, having to get it back. Make sure, again, you look through this hole, take your pliers, and you've adjusted it right so many times, not just on this radio, all the other ones, the aquatic radio, the Rockford radio, some of the aftermarket radios, when they come in our shop later and we're working on them, people have put two bolts in, one on each side. Make sure you put all four in. It's, it's very important that this structure is held tight. You're gonna have less vibration. Everything works better when you put all the bolts back where they should go. Sometimes it's a little bit of a struggle, but it's really not that bad. Just take your time, don't get upset about it. Find the bolt you dropped, come back up here and put it back in. So I've got this bolt started. I'm going ahead and I'm spinning it in most of the way. Now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna pull on this radio and get it back as far as I can. We're gonna come around this side and you're gonna see our radio has got a little bit of a gap up here at the top and we're gonna push this in till we're so far in that we're almost touching there. And that's gonna give us more room down here at our ignition switch. All right, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to pull this as much as I can this way. And I'm going to get it where it's good and tight. Now I want you to notice something. On both sides we have a bracket and we have a nice fin here that you could put a screwdriver in and you could pull it a little tighter as you're tightening your bolts. I think rather than try to use two or three people and just grunt force pulling it, put you a tool in here, pry that slightly out and tighten it down. So we're just going to grab a screwdriver and we're going to do that very thing. See how much more pull I was able to get very, very simply just by using this screwdriver. We'll do that on both sides. And as you get it pulled out, then go ahead and tighten that bolt down so it'll stay there. So now I'm gonna go on the other side, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna take my screwdriver, put in this bracket, just kind of pull this backwards. Tool past these wires. All we're doing is we're using our screwdriver to compress our gasket and then locking it in place. All right, so now that we've got that done, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit more tightness on this. All right, so after fully compressing that gasket, this is almost touching. It's not quite touching, but it's right at it. And you'll see that your radio is pulled all the way back and that rubber is touching this fairing. It's gonna give us just enough room to get our switch back in. All right, so now that we've got our screen in as far as we can get it and it's good and tight, I'm gonna drop our switch back in in that access position. I'm gonna push it all the way down and we're gonna rotate it around and get it to drop in. We're locked in. And if you notice, we've got a pretty good distance here. You can see the contrast on my finger. There is room. It's not like it's touching the screen. Now, if you go all the way to four o'clock, you'll see you can bring it all the way around to where it will just barely touch the screen. But no risk that we're gonna end up scratching or leaving any damage on it. I think they did an excellent job with the fitment because there's really no play here at all. And remember, this is the thicker fairing. It's gonna go in even easier and give you even more room on the regular street glide. All right, so really wasn't that hard. Just showed you how to get the radio mounted, compressed all the way in, our ignition switches back in. Now we've got a couple little cool things. So we're gonna unplug that original indicator. It's just right up here at the top. The turn signal neutral bar indicator we talked about. I'll feed the wiring back down underneath here. So I'm just gonna pull this out and you're gonna see right on the back of the radio here, we have the, the plug that plugs into the factory port. I'm gonna plug it in, just make sure it locks in. Looks like it just locked. That's all there is to hooking up your neutral turn signal indicator. Very, very easy. Now we're gonna take the harness that was supplied from Soundstream. It doesn't get easier than this. Got a cam lock on the end, so it's gonna lock in and we don't have to worry about it coming unplugged. So we're just gonna put it in and rotate that over till it locks. Now you're gonna see two factory connectors. The main radio connector, simple plug-in. We're gonna take our rear speaker connector. I'm glad we had a bike with rear speakers so I can show you this connector. We're gonna plug it in place. Now keep in mind, we have full plug-and-play amp and speaker packages that go along with this radio. Simply amps that bolt on top of the radio or Velcro to it, depending on the amplifier. Harnessing that plugs in just this easy. And at Volunteer Audio, we're gonna preset all the amp gains and the filters specifically for this radio. So when you get done, it was really just plug and play. Now we'll have future videos going over how to install those amps, installing the speakers. This one's really just dedicated to the radio. But after this harness is plugged in, as simple as that was, we're gonna take our antenna, we're gonna plug it in place, and now we're gonna install our USB. Because it does have Apple CarPlay, it does have Android Auto, and they are a wired input. So we're gonna to wanna to plug our phone up to this USB and we don't want to leave it in the fairing where it's hard to get to. So they included on the back of the radio the USB. It's got a weatherproof cap and it also has a nut that we're going to remove and then all we're going to do is take the cigarette lighter out. This is going to go right back in that hole. We're going to take this cover and put on it, tighten it up, and we're going to have a nice weatherproof USB location. So this is going to do two things. It's going to allow us to have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto when we plug in. It's also going to charge your phone. So what you probably were already doing with the cigarette lighter, we're gonna to continue to do just with a USB. All right, so let's talk about one more wire. We get questions all the time. What is the blue wire with this little accessory plug? This is the same connector that's in the fairing on the 14 and newer Harleys. It's also where you're gonna plug in your amp turn on wire, whether you add drop in subs or you add an amplifier, it's gonna plug in here and the radio is gonna turn it on. Now any of the new uh, 
hidden antennas also have the same style connector so you can plug in there and it's going to turn on your antenna when the radio is powered up. We also have on the back of this radio a camera input so if you want to put a backup camera on the back of the bike it simply plugs in here and this wire is a turn on that anytime you select the camera source powers up your camera. Black port on the back if you remove this cap it's going to give you access where to plug in your Sirius XM tuner if you buy a Sirius XM standalone tuner. I will tell you the Sirius XM tuner is probably the lowest volume source currently. We really like using the Sirius XM app in Apple CarPlay or Android Auto because it sounds substantially better. And on the back of your radio you also have front, rear, and sub RCA outputs. We always recommend at Volunteer Audio when you're doing Harley amplifier installation that you go speaker level input not RCA on your mids and highs. That low RCA input can pick up in your cables LED light drivers, it can pick up noise from noisy electrical systems and you can end up with whine or noise with RCA so no matter what radio you're doing we recommend high level in and here we are they've given us this great access to all of our speaker wires on this additional harness that comes with the radio so you could cut here and go high level in and out of your amplifier using this harness. If you buy an amp from Volunteer Audio it's going to come completely plug and play with all these harnesses already made so you can simply plug it in the bike. We're going to take all the guesswork out and make sure you have a great end result. Last but not least we have a microphone input on the back of the radio. We don't normally install the microphones, we talk to our customers. If you're not going to try to talk on the phone going down the road and understand even when you're trying to do that it's very difficult over the engine and the wind noise, I don't recommend mounting the microphone. Uh, I don't really care for the look of a mic mounted externally myself, but it's also you're going to about have to come to a stop. If you're coming to a stop, grab your phone, talk to whoever it is. Uh, so it has that ability. That has to be there to meet Apple CarPlay and Android Auto certification for use of your voice assistant. They want to know that you can hook a mic up for that. And it has that ability if you want to install it. We just don't normally do that at Volunteer Audio when we do the installs. So let me take our factory cigarette lighter out. Come around here and I'll show you how that works. So on this one, somebody's added an antenna. They've got some little jumper cables going to it. But we're going to unplug our power and ground that was going to our cigarette lighter. On a Harley, it's really simple. The outside portion just unspins. As you unspin this like a nut, you can simply pull your cigarette lighter out. Very, very easy to remove. Now we're going to take this USB. We're going to stick it through this same hole. Once we've got it through the hole, we're going to install the little rubber for this cap. Take the included nut that came with it, tighten that down. Just that easy, you have a USB input that's weatherproof, mounted on the outside of your fairing. Didn't have to drill any holes. If you want to leave the cigarette lighter, you could drill a hole in the fairing and you could add this somewhere else. Uh, but I think it's a great idea to not drill additional holes and just use that existing port because this USB is also going to charge your phone. Now that we got our USB installed, everything's plugged in, all we need to do is a little wire management. Just use some sense, take the wiring, secure it up with zip ties where it's out of the way because we don't want to just leave things hanging, and then we're going to put our fairing back on. So just a couple extra zip ties just to secure things. Like the CB antenna is not going to be used, don't get confused, you don't need it anymore. Same thing on the other side. I'm just going to secure some of this wiring up and under the radio. So really just making sure these things aren't just left hanging and dangling. Uh, here's our turn on wire later if we add our amplifier, which I'm sure we will in the future. So we'll just tuck it up here. Plug in our headlight after I cut my zip ties. Kind of trim those down and we'll get our fairing right back on. All right, so we're going to take our fairing. Got it back over here to the box. Simply going to plug our headlight back in. Now we're just going to kind of do what we did before, just kind of wiggling this fairing in between these lights so we don't have to take them off. I see people sometimes take those lights off. It's really not necessary. It's going to cause you a lot of trouble. We're going to reach down underneath the fairing here. We're going to make sure that all of our headlight wiring goes back in behind the fairing before we move forward. So now that's back in there. We're just going to simply start our upper center screw. So back to our T27 Torx. Now this is the most common hardware, this is the factory hardware. Sometimes guys have went to a different looking hardware, so maybe it's an Allen head, maybe it's a Torx. Uh, there's not a lot of variation, but we just kind of tell you what tools we're using. You may need something different. At this point I should be able to slide my windshield and this bag 
back in place here. All right, so now we're just going to start our two outside bolts. I'm not going to tighten any of these down until we get all the bolts in. And you want to be careful, these are all brass inserts. Make sure that you start them straight. All right. Make sure your windshield has fell into place and that you're not going to risk cracking it. Uh, it has a specific place it goes. We don't want the bolts to be pushing on that actual glass. All right, so now that we've got those started, we're just going to look through here, make sure all of our holes line up, get these bolts also started. Again, still don't tighten any of them yet. We want to make sure that they're all in place. It's going to make it easier on you. All right. Very, very easy. This isn't like doing the older road glides. These fairings are very, very simple to put back on. So we'll make sure we get all of our bolts back in place. Now, this is my last bolt. So when I get it in, I'm going to go ahead and tighten it all the way down. Make sure it's tight. Let's do the other four bolts. All right, so those four are tight. Let's move back around to the front. Just tighten the bolts here at the windshield. All right, last but not least, just straighten up your side lights here. And you've installed your new radio. How easy was that? So a lot of people are worried about taking on tasks like this, and I hope this video has shown you just how simple it is. We just take it one step at a time. All right, so now we wanna see what the radio looks like. Let's turn it on, let's check it out, and let me go over the features with you. All right, look at that beautiful screen powering up. You'll see our neutral indicator, our oil indicator. Also, we've got our turn signals that we can see shine through there. All of that works just like it should. Radio's booting on, we're in Bluetooth. Let's go ahead and skip over to FM. We can do that on this screen just by pressing radio. We can also use the center uh, thumb control over here to press in to go through our sources. So. So we got sound on our radio. Definitely we can connect some Bluetooth up and play probably something a lot better than we're gonna find on FM. Let's go back to that home screen, go over the sources. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, they'll be active once you've plugged into this USB with your phone. At the same time, it's gonna charge your phone. We have Bluetooth, we have USB if you wanna play music on a USB drive. Uh, now that's limited to a thousand songs per folder, so you may have to relay out your USB music into individual folders to make that work better. Call us if you have questions on that or look at the owner's manual. They also go over it in there as well. Um, FM radio, Sirius XM. Now Sirius XM, to be active, you have to add the SXV300 tuner in behind, but you also have the ability to do the Sirius XM app through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. We think it sounds a lot better in those digital sources anyways, so you may just wanna use your free app if you've already got it active in another vehicle. We have our day and night dim mode right here on the front of the screen. Simply pressing that button. If you see a moon, you're in the night mode. If you see the sun, it's for daytime. Settings button to get us into our settings menu. Quick button to get into our EQ. I won't reset that EQ. It's a custom EQ that allows you the ability to adjust it wherever you want. Bass is on this side, mid is in the middle, treble's on the right side. It gives us a lot of control over our sound. This so radio also has built-in high-pass and low-pass filters, meaning we can block bass from these little speakers to allow them to play louder and clearer while having a dedicated sub out. So if you wanted to add a drop-in subwoofer like we offer for these bikes, you can have full control of that also. If you look at this radio, it is phenomenal. It looks great in this fairing. We have plenty of room between our ignition switch and our radio. It didn't block any gauges, and I think the guys at Soundstream have done a phenomenal job. This is a complete and total game changer. No fairing swap needed. It doesn't look out of place. A lot of people said, well, I, I want to see it in person. I want to see it in a bike. I think it's going to look out of place. This thing fits perfect. Fits perfect. I wouldn't change anything about it. Brandon, Ronnie, you did an excellent job. Uh, I love this radio. So 
At Volunteer Audio, we're gonna offer plenty of plug and play packages. Maybe you've just put the radio in, you see how simple this was. Continue to follow along as our other videos as we show how to put amps in and speakers in as well. You can reach out to us at 1-844-30-AUDIO. We'd love to talk about your bike, the system you're wanting to put together, go over those options, go over pricing, and let you know exactly what we can build for you. You can also watch us for free on YouTube. Watch the other videos as we'll show you how to install it. We'll show you installs that we have done, let you hear the end result, hopefully allow you to make that right decision and pick the right equipment even better. Thank you so much for watching. I try to cover as much information as I can to make sure you know everything that you need to know about the radio. We did a product video where I go a lot more in depth into the features. In this one, we did step-by-step -step on how to install it and the end result, just making sure everything worked and that everything was exactly like it should be. But definitely comment below. If something I left out, something I missed, there's a question you have, comment, I'll be happy. I watch them all day long. I watch those comments roll in. I'll reply to it. I'll make sure we answer your question very, very quickly. Again, phone number is one 30 audio to speak to one of our live sales or tech representatives to help you with this. You can also comment below. We'll be quick to reply back. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel. That helps us. Number one, it helps you see more content like this. It helps you see new things as they come out. If we get ideas on how to make things even better, we'll make future videos and cover that. We have great after the sales support. Definitely like this video by liking it. It brings it up in YouTube search results. It helps Volunteer Audio get seen by more people and you're helping us by doing that. Thank you so much for that. So subscribing and liking are crucial. Thank you for that. And as always, thank you for watching this video as well. And God bless.